The Prime Minister of Israel announced on Monday that there is a date scheduled when the IDF will enter Rafah. Meanwhile, the US, the terrorist organization Hamas and Israel are in final talks for a deal to release Israeli hostages. Operations continue and the IDF has embarked on an efficient and quick campaign to eliminate senior officials in Hamas and Hezbollah, even as reports continue to circulate that the IDF has withdrawn from Gaza. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on this 186th day of the war between Hamas and Hezbollah. Today, I'm coming to you from the border between Israel and the Gaza Strip. You can see Gaza behind me. After months of fighting in the southern Gaza Strip, in the last 24 hours, the IDF completed the withdrawal of the 98th Division from the Khan Yunis area. This followed an assessment that the maneuvers in the southern of the Gaza Strip had come to a logistical conclusion and the time had come to regroup and reorganize for the next step. The new strategy will focus on surgical raids into the Gaza Strip when intelligence provides a suitable target in order to exert pressure and create deterrence. This is similar to the strategy that has been used for many years in Judea and Samaria. It has also already been utilized by units operating in the Nazar Corridor, which crosses the Gaza Strip. Despite the withdrawal from the southern Gaza Strip, there are forces that remain inside Gaza and additional forces can be moved in whenever they're needed. However, the IDF has determined that there's no point in keeping forces in Khan Yunus for the sake of keeping forces there, as they will likely result in more casualties but little additional benefit for national security. The soldiers of Division 98 can take great pride in the work they've done in Khan Yunus over the past four months. They have completely dismantled the Hamas structure in the city, eliminating thousands of terrorists, destroying enormous stockpiles of weapons and ammunition, as well as terrorist training facilities and rocket launchers. Over 30,000 meters of tunnels and underground bunkers housing weapons manufacturing workshops were also found and destroyed, removing one of Hamas's most valuable strategic assets. It is also important to remember that in recent weeks, the IDF did not relinquish control of the areas close to the border since the infrastructure there was already being used by terrorists during October 7. Another noteworthy operation was in the Hamid neighborhood in Khan Yunis, where the terrorists were quickly surprised. In less than an hour, the forces reached the center of the neighborhood and fought in all areas, including the Kasbah. Kasbah is the center of the city. There is no area left in Khan Yunis that the army did not operate in, and the IDF forces will be able to return to operational activity in the area at any stage when they are needed. But after four months of fighting, these forces needed to rest and their vehicles and equipment needed to be inspected, repaired, replaced and upgraded. This is likely true to other units that have been heavily engaged in the battles as well. All of these units need to prepare for the next stage, which is the final showdown with Hamas in Rafah. Much depends on the results of negotiations over the release of Israeli hostages. If a deal is reached, the next step will be to open humanitarian corridors for Gazan citizens to move out of Rafah. Then, a move into Rafah will probably start after the Muslim holiday of Eid el-Fitr at the end of the Ramadan month. In any case, the IDF has plans to continue its activities in the Gaza Strip, both in Rafah and in other places. At this point, I will ask you to please help us continue spread the truth by clicking the follow button, subscribing to this YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Last Saturday, we marked half a year since the war started. The IDF has accomplished great achievements, including the destruction of 19 out of 24 Hamas battalions, along with several senior field commanders. 
The IDF has cleansed Shifa Hospital in Gaza City of terrorists who were hiding inside the hospital using staff and patients as human shields. We have destroyed rocket manufacturing plants, weapons depots, and ammunition stockpiles, and we continue to systematically destroy the underground tunnel networks. We are one step away from victory, but the high price we've paid in the lives of our soldiers and civilians is painful and heartbreaking. So now I moved into the city of Sderot. This is the biggest Israeli community surrounding the Gaza Strip. Yesterday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the nation of Israel, declaring that there is no juster war than this war, and we are determined to end it with a complete victory. We will return all our hostages back to their homes, complete the elimination of Hamas in the entire Gaza Strip, including Rafah, and ensure that Gaza will no longer pose a threat to Israel. Speaking of the negotiations over the hostages, Israel has agreed to the compromise outline that the United States is leading in the abductee case. These are the details of the proposal according to the various reports. One, the return of Gazans to the north of the Gaza Strip. The focus of the American proposal is an attempt to resolve the issue of hostages in exchange for Israeli guarantees of significant concessions in the return of Gazans to the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Two, increasing aid. According to a report in Al Jazeera, the proposal includes the introduction of 500 aid trucks every day to the Gaza Strip, including the northern part of the Strip. But already, today the number of aid trucks that enter come close to that, and according to the Israeli Defense Forces, 490 aid trucks were inspected and transferred to Gaza. This is the highest number of aid trucks that entered Gaza in one day since the beginning of the war and is also higher than the record set on Sunday, which was 322 trucks. Three, free murderers. The American compromise proposal came following the Israeli concern that if the issue of the residents return to the northern Gaza Strip is closed, the talks could break down over the number of security prisoners that Hamas demands to be released in the deal. Also, the nature of the crime that some of these security prisoners committed, which includes the murder of Israelis. The American proposal included the release of 100 murderers, while Hamas demanded the release of 150 prisoners serving life sentences in Israeli prisons. In total, according to the reports, 900 Palestinian security prisoners will be released in the first stage in exchange for 40 Israeli hostages who are still alive. The second stage includes the release of all the remaining abductees and the completion of the infrastructure meant to ensure delivery of humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. This is meant to secure a permanent ceasefire. According to Al Jazeera, the proposal did not specify the number of Palestinian prisoners to be released in the second phase. It is also very important to note that it did not include an Israeli withdrawal from the Gaza Strip. In addition, according to the reports, the American offer was developed as an Israeli agreement for the reopening of the Rashid and Salah al-Adin roads, under which the IDF will be stationed 500 meters away from those roads in order to protect them. As mentioned, the Americans sounded optimistic that the deal would result in a ceasefire, but Hamas was quick to pour cold water on these hopes. And the organization's representative, Ali Barkach, even told the Reuters news agency that the organization rejected the offer. But right now, Hamas claims that it is examining the proposal once more. Right now, the whole world will stand and wait for an answer from a terrorist organization that kidnapped 240 Israeli citizens, including women and children, and is holding the Palestinian people as captives in their own country as human shields. Please join me as we spread the truth of what really is happening in this country, in Israel. 
please support us. And most importantly, please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Remember that this is a spiritual war. So together we can make sure that the truth reaches far. Hamas is an abominable, dishonest terrorist organization. Just yesterday, the IDF spokesman posted videos showing parts of the interrogation of the Islamic Jihad spokesman Tariq Abu Shuluf. He was arrested by Israel at the Shifa hospital in Gaza City and was a significant part of the terrorist organization's propaganda machine. During his interrogation, Abu Shuluf admitted that the story that went viral in the beginning of the war about a hospital in Gaza that was hit by a missile was actually a direct hit from a failed launch that Hamas terrorists attempted to launch towards Israel and exploded inside the Gaza Strip. He also told in his investigation about the use of hospitals by the terrorist organizations in the Gaza Strip. He stated, they use hospitals, all of them. There is electricity and internet 24 hours a day. So they take, for example, the x-ray department. They don't close the whole thing, but take two rooms and decisions are made inside these rooms, inside the x-ray department rooms. Regarding the use of ambulances to escape Israel's surveillance efforts, he said, we have a person with connections in the ambulance system and through him, we transfer the wounded, the wanted, and senior officials. For example, we transferred Khaled El Batzach from place to place. El Batzach, who according to reports, was arrested in recent weeks by the IDF in Shifa Hospital, is one senior officials of the Islamic Jihad organization and is considered the mastermind behind its economic and administrative mechanism. In October, as I recall, IDF spokesman Brigadier General Daniel Hagari convened a press conference intended mainly for the foreign press in light of the rocket hitting the hospital in Gaza, which led to a large number of deaths and accusations by several Arab countries against Israel. After the incident, the IDF and the government presented evidence that it was a failed rocket by the Jihad towards Israel. By the way, in recent hours, the Air Force has increased the rate of attacking terrorist targets throughout the entire Gaza Strip. The echoes of the explosions are clearly heard in the area, and the skies of the Western Negev are filled with fighter jets. Please continue spreading the truth with us. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and help us spread the truth. It is important to remember that since the outbreak of the war, the city of Elat has become part of the battlefield. Missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles are launched with high frequency towards the city, mostly from Yemen. Some are intercepted by American, French, and British warships in the Southern Red Sea before entering Israel's airspace. The vessels have been deployed in this region since November, providing protection against attacks in the Bab El Mandav Strait, the Yemen Straits, and the Gulf of Eden. Sometimes, missiles that are fired at Elat get through this protective net, and last night, a SAR-6 missile of the Israeli Navy intercepted a suspicious aerial target in the first operational success for the Sea Dome naval system. The Sea Dome is simply a battery of the Iron Dome system fitted to operate from a naval vessel in the middle of the sea. It became operational in 2017 and has been on constant alert ever since. As always, we will continue to update you with the latest developments of what is happening in Israel and in the Middle East. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos with anyone who's interested to know the truth, because we want the world to know what is going on in Israel. And most importantly, we want them to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God is good, and together we will win this war. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.